Today, I'm going for our first run in whatever these things are. Four point five nine miles, eleven minutes, twenty three seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty six beats per minute, and six hundred and twenty three feet of vertical gain. Nothing too long in terms of any extended uh, uphills, but it was basically like all uphill or downhill. Pretty sharp. Nothing really long, but just constant up and down. And I thought it'd be a great time to go for a first run in these. And what these are are sensors that you put inside your shoes. It's called Nerve. And what these are, are 16 sensors underneath each foot. You put them in underneath the insole of your shoe, and then this kind of clips onto the outside of your shoe. Uh, on this, there is like a kind of like a, a pack. They're hard to get off, and I always kind of, sometimes they come right off, sometimes they don't. There we go. And inside here is uh, batteries and a whole bunch of other stuff that's in here that helps make all the sensors make sense, and it communicates then the sensors with your phone. And the idea with all of this is that between the two different sets of sensors that are gonna be underneath your feet is that as you're running, you're getting way more data than you've been able to get before, even in a stride foot pod or from the wrist or any other external monitors, or at least that's the promise. So I thought that I would take this out for a spin. So it's been really rainy and wet here in Iowa lately. So it was, I thought a muddy day would be kind of a fun way to kind of christen these things. So I put them into a pair of my Solomon Senseride threes and uh, headed out for the trail. And uh, my biggest concern was that this thing was going to be bulky. You got like an insole inside your shoe and this thing sticking on the, on the side. And uh, it was manageable for today. So uh, a lot less of a concern than I thought it was gonna be. And I was able to go for a run. And so what was I able to get for like the extra weight each sensor is, or each of these insoles is 0.8 of an ounce. And with that, you're able to get GPS. So you can run with it with your phone or even without. It, and then the sensors tell you cadence, stride length, pronation, and foot strike, which I think are some really interesting stats that I'm not getting from any of the other devices that I've run with before. Um, the GPS gives you that pace and distance. So then pretty much all the statistics you might want from your run, you're able to get from having this. Now, I also had my stride foot pot along with me for the purpose of this run um, because I just keep it on all my runs. And then I had the Polar Grit X uh, with me uh, as kind of like my control or my comparison device. And just for the sake of disclosures, the Nerve was sent to me for the purpose of review. And then the other devices that I mentioned, which are my heart rate monitor uh, and my watch and the foot pod, the Polar devices, the watch and the heart rate monitor were provided by Polar and the Stride is something that I purchased with my own money, but in no event of all these products, no one's paying me to 
make this video to use their products or to include their products in the video and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before this video goes up on youtube so now with the disclosures out of the way let's take a look at the run so with this run i was using my phone to control it and kind of like whenever you use your phone to record a run, whether you're using like Nike Run Club app, Strava app, it looked pretty similar. There's like a giant run button and then you get some the running data as you're running and then put the phone kind of in my pocket and I was just kind of running along. And when I ended the run, I was immediately able to see a whole bunch of different kinds of metrics, not only pace and distance, but I was also able to see cadence, which is something that I'm normally able to see with the devices that I have. But I was also able to see stride length, which I think is something that I'm able to have. I'm not sure. It's not a, a metric that I normally keep tabs on, but the main ones that I was really interested in were my pronation and foot strike metrics. And that was pretty insightful. So in terms of pronation, people talk about pronation all the time when they're talking about stability shoes, hint of stability, over pronation, regular pronation, supination. A lot of people kind of like don't really know exactly where the boundaries are between one and the other. This takes all the guesswork out of it because it's got all these sensors in the bottom. Uh, it can tell when your foot is not hitting the way it's supposed to. And so it told me on this run that I was only 23% neutral for my run, even though I've considered myself a neutral runner for all this time, but it says that my neutrality is poor. And so that was pretty insightful. What's more insightful is as I'm able to drill down into it is that I can then look at the left foot versus the right foot. And given the fact that like my right knee's kind of been bothering me a lot lately, I think it's ultimately some sort of overuse injury slash muscle imbalance that's going on there. Something I'm working on on my own. I thought that that foot is what would show major pronation problems. Uh, maybe some sort of indicator as to, or more like clues as to the fact that things are imbalanced or off and that's what's creating some of the issues that I'm having. Turns out that my right foot is more neutral than my left foot. So for most of the time, I was able to look at left or right or both of the feet. And my right foot is mostly in this like pure neutral range. And my left foot is in the over pronation range, which also kind of makes sense to me. A lot of people have told me, and I've also seen it myself, and I see myself run in slow motion all the time is that my left foot seems to always be crashing in. And so on certain like super squishy shoes, uh, a lot of like the marathon super shoes that are out there, that's when I see it most prominently. I can have like super stick back height. And then when my left foot comes in, it, it's almost as if my big toe is still almost is touching the ground. I never thought that was a problem. I thought maybe it was just the angle of the cameras or whatever, cause I'm right-handed and I tend to hold the camera in the right hand and it's pointing across my body at the left foot. So I maybe thought it was like a camera trick kind of thing. Turns out I'm actually quite over pronated on the left foot. I'm not really sure what to do with that information because my left foot seems fine. But then again, maybe it's because my left foot's over pronating that my right foot's doing something else and it's compensating. I'm not really sure, but very interesting to see. And that's gonna get wrapped into some new updates that they have rolling out right now. That'll be useful for me, although I have to find a treadmill to be able to use it, or maybe I can kind of like game the system on it a little bit. They are now going to start releasing an ability to have like an indoor like foot trainer. So you have to be on an indoor run because you're going to be looking at your phone while you're doing this. They don't want people like running outside and like staring at their phone. But you're able to get real time views of what your feet are doing when you're on the treadmill, which I think could be really helpful from like a correction standpoint. I've been talking to you guys about for like weeks now about glute activation and how I don't know what it means. I don't know what it feels like when I'm glute activated or not. I'm not saying that this is gonna help my butt, but I'm saying what I can really relate to is the idea of people saying like, stop pronating so much or do this with your foot strike, do that with your gait. I understand how frustrating it could be when people are telling you words and are kind of like yelling at you about it and you don't understand what it means and you don't know what it's supposed to feel like. With this kind of visual cue, at least when it comes to like foot strike, then you can really see, are you hitting it like where you're supposed to be hitting it or not? And then you could over time, like with those visual cues, keep hitting it in the right spot in terms of your foot strike. And then that will kind of straighten you out uh, as you're training on the treadmill. So I could see that being really useful. I wish Sarah had like a glute activation feature on this. I'm not sure how they would include that, but that's something that I would really love to be able to have. <laughs> that's not it on this app, but in terms of your foot strike, the foot strike trainer is something that they're gonna be able to show you. And as soon as I can get on a treadmill, or I think I might just tell it I'm doing an indoor run and try to look at it and see how it works. So we've got plenty of like really long straights, lots of visibility, not a lot of turns that I can kind of 
probably do an indoor run, air quotes, while I'm still outside. So that's something I definitely wanna check because I'd like to be able to see like when I'm tired, what is my foot strike doing? Is it pronating more or is it pronating less? Because I could see the graph, but it's not that useful. I think being able to see it like in real time is gonna be really helpful for me. Now, the other thing that I was really interested in this device being able to tell me about myself is my foot strike. And so we already talked a little bit about pronation, like how much are my ankles like rolling in with each foot, uh, foot strike. But now it's telling me about the foot strike itself, like which part of the foot am I using? Am I using the forefoot? Am I using the midfoot or am I using the heel? Um, and on this run in New Wine Park, uh, like I was mentioning before, nothing super crazy in terms of elevation, but everything is like steep up and steep down. There are no flats. So I expected to have a little bit of a variety in terms of where my feet were hitting on the downhills. It's fast enough that you can't just speed down it. You have to slow yourself down a little bit. So there's a little bit of heel breaking that's going on. Um, and then there is a lot of uphill where I thought I'd be more on my toes, but it turns out for this run, I was 75% uh, and uh, pretty consistent between both feet, which is good, I think, uh, in terms of being a midfoot striker. So I think that's kind of where I've always thought I am and that's kind of where I wanna be. And so uh, for this kind of run where I really wasn't pushing too hard, just trying to get up and down the hills and have a little bit of fun out there, um, I wasn't expecting myself to be on the toes a lot. This will be interesting, something else that I can look at later where if I'm on a faster run where I wanna be more on my toes, we can see how much am I really gonna be on my toes and then try and correlate that to my stride length and cadence and think about how I can improve my running efficiency by looking at all those numbers together. So there's a lot of options and potential in there. Um, and what you can also do with this foot strike is uh, to help enable some of that analysis is that it lets you look at the foot strike as it changed over the course of various miles. And that could be really useful too if you're on more of a flat course. Today I was on lots of rolling hills. So I expected there to be a lot of variation in terms of forefoot and heel and midfoot striking. But if I'm on a flat, relatively flat course where I should be uh, mostly midfoot and forefoot striking, I could see in the later miles, am I heel striking a little bit more as I'm fatiguing or at a certain pace or at a certain cadence, how efficient or how like kind of optimal is my running. So more things that I think that are really interesting to look at as I can give this thing some more data. In terms of some of the updates that they real that they just announced this week, uh, they uh, finally brought Strava integration to it, which I think is pretty important. And now you can pair it to an external heart rate monitor. Uh, you're also going to start getting elevation data, which I think there's always been altimeters in there, but I think that they haven't really like unlocked that feature to people yet. So I should be able to get um, elevation data going forward. So that's pretty interesting as well. And I think that could be really interesting if you pair that then with your kind of your foot strike, your midfoot, forefoot, heel strike kind of data with elevation to see like how that, how efficient you're running. So that's also something that I think is gonna be really important. Um, you can also manually enter um, an activity. So if you didn't bring these or if you switched shoes last minute and didn't wanna like move these from one shoe to another, something else that you can uh, just definitely do so that it knows the activities that you did. And the idea is that it wants to know all of your activities, um, whether you use the device or not, because it really wants to be able to give you more guidance. So it wants to do like determines things like training load, like our kind of like what you see with a lot of the watches. Are you overtraining? Are you maintaining? Are you detraining? That kind of thing. Uh, but it also gives you uh, or is going to start giving you like a daily run allowance. So for people that don't really know what that means, um, it'll kind of prescribe. All right. Well, you might be have been hitting it too hard last couple of days. So we're going to tell you run this much amount at this kind of pace to take it a little bit easy. So I think that could be really useful. The idea being then when you have those kinds of runs, you can have guidance in your ears telling you like, look, your cadence isn't at the space that you want it to be at. Your foot, your stride length isn't quite right. So shorten up that stride, pick up the cadence or slow down a little bit. Those are the kind of things that it's gonna be able to tell you. It doesn't tell me those things yet because it just doesn't know me well enough yet in terms of the data that I put into it to start telling me that. But as we get more runs, that's some of the stuff that I'm gonna be looking at going forward. So that's all like the features that it's been able to give me, some of the interesting data that I'd like to see a little bit more of, um, and some of the things that it's promising in terms of some of these latest updates that just were announced this week. Some of the things that I'm concerned about with a device like this is one is like, this is a lot. 
right? Uh, well, like the packaging that it came in, beautiful packaging, really well designed, like the, the customer like unboxing experience, really, really nice, especially for a device that costs what this does. But like this, the way that this thing is, like it just feels a little bit unfinished. Like I understand like you can either have a thin insole or you can have this like kind of like sidecar, but I don't, I don't like this sidecar. But this is like on the side of the ankle. I was worried today that I would end up with a lot of chafing because uh, this part ends up like, cause this is the way it like sits inside the shoe. And then here's like the side wall of like the heel cup. And so this part touches uh, your heel. And I was worried that this might cause some chafing. I didn't bring the tallest socks with me and I was going on lots of uneven terrain. So like there's gonna be a lot of movement. Uh, I felt like it was had been rubbing after like about 50 minutes of running today, 40 something minutes of running today. Um, nothing that was bad, but like the first couple hours after my shower today, I felt like it was like, oh, there was some rub in there. So like, is this something that I'd really wanna bring with me on a 20 mile run? I'm not really sure that I'd wanna do that. Um, so I have some concerns and I just don't like the bulkiness of it. And like the user experience, there's like, there's a big outer button here which is what you would use if you're gonna go phone free running. And then to turn them on, each of these has its own like individual button. It reminds me a lot of the early days of like true wireless earbuds, where you had to like turn one on and then turn the other one on, wait for them to pair to each other. And then you could try to pair them to your phone. I, it kind of has that vibe to it. There's just a lot in this user experience that leaves a lot to be desired. And so uh, ultimately it kind of makes me wonder like, two like really big questions um, that I'm gonna try to figure out over the next couple of weeks running with this thing is like, is this product ready? Um, I don't feel like this is like a finished product. Like this can't be it, right? I, I can't imagine people running with this all the time. And the second question is kind of related to that is, am I the right customer for this? I mean, I'm a data nerd. I love the data. I love all the metrics. Um, that comes with running. I just find them all fascinating. I don't necessarily know a ton about them all, but I just like having, it's like a big security blanket for me. But I'm not sure that like being able to look at pronation and being able to look at foot strike like this is something that I can, are, are that actionable for me. And so it strikes me as something that like, especially at the price right now, the list price for this is $300 per pair of insoles. I don't know like kind of what the longevity is of these, like the sensors might last like an indefinite number of miles, but like these insoles, I don't know how long these insoles are going to like last. So, uh, it's not a cheap device. And so the, it kind of puts it into the category of like those like recovery boots like the Normatex, like the air compression recovery boots that are lovely and I just adore being in them. But at like a starting price of about like 1200 bucks for like Normatec boots, like it puts it in like, this is stuff that gyms buy, that you get a membership to a gym and you get access to that as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. But like the average person probably doesn't buy them for themselves. Like this strikes me as maybe this is something that like PT offices get so they could, or like coaches will get, so that they could put them in the shoes of people who are running just to do checkups, to kind of like see like if someone's injured, what's going on with their foot strike, maybe we can make some corrections there. Or maybe it's kind of like those things that they have at the running stores that they like to make the custom insoles with, where you stand in it and it takes like a 3D scan of your foot. Maybe this is something that you put in shoe stores so that way people can make better recommendations in terms of shoes. Um, but I just, I'm not sure that this, I, I don't think that this is the right, like, I, I don't think this is a targeted for me. I like the, the data metrics are hardcore run data metrics, but like the guidance and the coaching and like the run health, all that seems like it's designed for people who are new to running. And I just feel like this is like a really like big, like, this is a lot for like a new runner, I would think like i think that's a lot so like i'm i'm a little bit confused by the product and who the target audience really is or should be um but the product itself is very interesting i wish that the, again that there were a way that like all this part could just be in here and then i could just put this inside the shoe and then chop this part off then i'd say like then you have more of a mass market product but with this thing on the side i'm having a hard time with it but i'll try to 
keep running with it to see what it looks like, what it's it, what kind of information is it giving me as it, like it learns me, as it starts telling me and giving me direction on how I can improve my running, uh, what kinds of runs should I be doing and how to run faster or how to run easy, like those kinds of things. So I'll definitely keep testing it, test out some of those new features. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to go for an indoor run in it to get that foot strike trainer going and see what that's like. Cause I'm really keen to see how, like when I'm at flat, like pavement, what is my foot strike like? And can that tell me anything about what's going on with my knee? So those are the areas that I'm going to take it. Uh, and those are my thoughts so far after just the first run with the nerve. I don't even know what to call this smart insole uh, yeah uh, the nerve sensors yeah nerve sensors i'm not sure i'm not sure like what product category you even put this in but uh it's a fascinating device if you have questions put them in the comments down below i'll try to answer them or if it's a question about like how well does it do xyz let me know because you know I'm just gonna run in them for a while and I'm not really sure what to look for. So if you guys have specific things to look for, definitely I would love some guidance in terms of what I should be keeping an eye out for next in terms of what can this thing do or teach me. So that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?